Welcome. Uh, we certainly appreciate you attending uh, the EV and Dynacord Professional Audio System webinar. Uh, very much appreciated uh, you taking some time out of your day. Hope everyone out there is uh, staying safe, uh, given the current uh, situation that we're all in. But uh, we're definitely going to get through this together uh, and in the interim until we can actually uh, visit some of you in person. Um, wanted to put together some webinars that um, hopefully you will find informative. So let's get started. So a couple of considerations today. Uh, this webinar is definitely being recorded, so um, be mindful of that. Uh, questions are going to be answered at the end of the presentation, and you can use the uh, the chat function. Uh, so just click the chat button uh, off to the side there and um, write your questions uh, in that chat window, and we will definitely take them uh, at the end. So really want your participation. Uh, hopefully Rob and I nail all of the questions uh, and get those uh, answered for you. But uh, if you've got anything along the way, please don't hesitate to write it in there, and we will definitely get to it. So with me today is uh, Robert Ferguson. Robert is the Product Marketing Manager for North America for uh, Electro Voice and Dynacord. Uh, Rob's been with us uh, quite a while, started in inside sales, and really has a, a really great working knowledge of the product and the systems as a whole for the, uh, the install part of our business. Uh, my name is Sean Schallenberger. I'm a Director of uh, Installed Audio for North America, Director of Sales. Thanks, Sean. Thanks for the uh, the introduction there. So, as Sean had mentioned, uh, we're going to focus today on Electrovoice and Dynacore professional audio systems. So, this webinar is really an introduction uh, to some system solutions. There are plenty of, of product systems that are available within both these brands. But again, as Sean had mentioned, we are a part of Bosch Communication Systems. So, uh, the Bosch family of brands, which includes Bosch. Electrovoice, Dynacord, RTS, and Telex, but today we'll be focusing more on the Electrovoice and Dynacord brands and specifically on some installation case studies. So uh, we'll focus on commercial loudspeakers from EV uh, first, then we'll do go more into the professional loudspeaker realm for more foreground applications. We'll also touch on some uh, Dynacord audio electronics, so primarily amplifiers there, uh, some sound system software to pair with that for control. Uh, and then, of course, we'll go through some EV and Dynacord system solutions with the two brands together. So starting off with our commercial audio, uh, you know, uh, for uh, a variety of applications where atmosphere is really the focus, but it's more more background music, right, uh, where we're maybe on the cusp of foreground. So this could be a variety of applications. Got a couple up here on the screen. Uh, it could be a hospitality application, could be maybe a fitness center, retail, a convention center. Uh, there's plenty of other applications there, but that's really where we see the uh, Electrovoice EVID line fitting in here, which you see, see pictured here on the screen. Uh, there's quite a variety of, of models available. Um, they are pretty aesthetically pleasing, so they'll blend right into the architecture. They don't stick out like a th sore thumb. And then, of course, there are some different color options here as well to kind of match whatever uh, environment that we're installing these into. So as kind of a snapshot for the entire portfolio here, there's a variety of options available. And certainly uh, something that we kept in mind when engineering and designing these loudspeakers is we want them to all be tuned and sound relatively similar. So uh, that way we can mix and match, right, depending on what our environment is. And uh, a lot of times we're in an environment where there's uh, there's several different ways that you could mount a loudspeaker. And obviously you want something that is aesthetically pleasing and obviously is easy to install, right, and makes sense uh, for the end user there. So. Uh, we have some surface mount options here at the top. Uh, we have EVID Compact, which is our smaller, uh, really uh, aesthetically pleasing, hard to see, uh, but pack quite a punch. Uh, those are two inch full range uh, surface mount loudspeakers pictured there. Next to that is EVID S, uh, also a surface mount. Uh, it's relatively new within the surface mount range of EVIDs, uh, more of a traditional footprint than maybe what you're used to with the Electrovoice EVIDs on the surface mount side. And I'll talk a little bit more about those as well. They, it does feature a quick smart mount uh, option there. It's one of the fastest uh, surface mount speakers that I, I've seen in the market period. Uh, and next to that, uh, up there at the top, we have the dual woofer model. Some people call it the football or the kidney bean or the fencing mask. Uh, there's a couple different uh, there's a couple different options within the range. Uh, again, all of these do come in black and white. Uh, the step uh, 
below that is our pendant options uh, shown there. We have the EVA compact range, which is again a two inch, and then we have the six and a half inch full range pendant uh, pictured there. And I'll also talk a little bit more about that as that's been a pretty popular product here for us. Um, uh, of course, we have plenty of ceiling speaker options, which you see featured there. We have a two inch, a four inch, a four inch low profile, a six and a half inch, a couple different eight inch models, including just the regular, a low profile with a smaller cane on the back for those tight spaces, and then of course uh, a high ceiling model that's horn loaded, a little more directive uh, when we need it to be. And then of course on the end we do have the big boy there, the 12 inch two way. Uh, you know we see it in a lot of other applications where we want to hide the hide the speaker a little bit more into the ceiling. Uh, we're seeing that they're really popular for a lot of applications, but specifically we see them a lot in fitness centers. Um, and of course, we have some premium ceiling options. Uh, we have a six and a half inch and an eight inch. And the real difference between that and the uh, regular even ceiling speaker models is that they are uh, they have a com separate compression driver, whereas the regular ceiling models actually are all coax. So just just something to keep in mind as far as the differences between the two. And then down there at the bottom, we do have a variety of even subwoofer models. Uh, you know, we have surface mount uh, options as well as ceiling mount options available depending on, on what we need here. Now, again, we can mix and match all of these products and we know that they'll sound relatively similar. They're tuned uh, pretty similar as well. So I'll talk a little bit about EVID S uh, in the surface mount range. It's a little bit of a newer product for us. However, uh, it's been very popular, specifically one of the reasons why it's so popular is how quick it is to install, aside from the fact that it sounds great right out of the box. So uh, it does come in a four inch, five and a quarter, and an eight inch full range. And then for subwoofers within the range, we have a 12 inch corner mount, and then we have a dual 10 inch subwoofer as well. Now these all come IP54 right out of the box, so they are, they have a great IP rating right out of the box, so can be used for a variety of applications, but we also have an extreme weather model that's IP65 for the five and a quarter model, and uh, also the dual 10 inch subwoofer can be IP65 as well. Now, uh, these models do fit, feature a smart mount system uh, for pre-construction, right? So uh, there's a video of this on our website if you wanna see just how simple and easy it is. It's by far the fastest uh, install a loudspeaker I've ever seen. Uh, however, the pre-mount bracket comes with a level bubble already built inside, so we know that it's level and even and we don't have to worry about it. Uh, we can run pre-wire ahead of time into the solid gold contacts. And then once we're done with uh, the new construction and there's actually even a paint shield we can put on this pre-construction bracket, it's as simple as just sliding the loudspeaker on, setting a set screw, and adjusting it slightly to whatever angle we need it to be and it's all set and ready to go. So it's a very simple one, two, three step, and uh, I challenge you to find a quicker mounting uh, loudspeaker out there. But these are available in black and white, as I had mentioned, and there is a uh, low impedance models and then high impedance models as well. So the EVID six and a half inch pendant, uh, which is also relatively new for us as well. Uh, it's been around for a little while, but has been wildly popular as uh, we, we're seeing more and more spaces that have more open architecture and not necessarily drop tile environment. Um, but it has excellent audio quality. It has incredible low frequency extension. I think even without a subwoofer, we still get a decent amount of low end out of this. And I think this has a lot to do with the way that the cabinet's constructed. But anyways, uh, it, you can obviously still pair it with a sub. Um, you know, the EVID S 10.1D, is one of the more popular ones. That's a dual 10 inch subwoofer that's often paired with it, but can be used for indoor and outdoor. Uh, there's a little terminal cover protect, protector there. So if we're in a patio area or somewhere where we're, we think we're gonna get a little condensation, uh, we don't have to worry about the terminal uh, getting affected by any moisture. So it comes with a 30 watt transformer already built on. And of course there's a low impedance bypass if we just wanna run it at eight ohm. And it does come in black and white and it also features a magnetic grill. And then for ceiling speakers, uh, we do have uh, a couple different options there. And uh, of course we feel this is needed depending on whatever the installation environment is. But one unique thing that we're doing at Electro Voice that we don't see that other manufacturers uh, are doing is we have uh, kind of a uniform bezel size for some of the models within the, within the line. So this includes the eight inch, the eight inch low profile, uh, the six and a half inch and the four inch low profile. Um, they all share the exact same bezel size. So that means it's the same exact cutout, right? So that's nice and easy. If I have a mix of these, I can go through and just, it's the same template. So it's the same cutout, really easy for me to, to I don't have to remember uh, maybe this cutout smaller than this one, right? Also it's aesthetically pleasing. So for the end user at the end of the day, um, it looks exactly the same. So if you choose to use a four inch or an eight inch here or there, it looks exactly the same at, at the end of the day. 
So, and also, you know, maybe we run into something unexpected in the ceiling. I mean, certainly, uh, usually we're pretty well prepared, but maybe there wasn't something on the plans, whether that's HVAC or something surprising. And you may have already cut the hole to put your eight inch in and you realize, ah, I, I'm not gonna be able to fit this in here because the depth of the can, you can easily switch to a six and a half inch or a four inch low profile and not have to worry about uh, the, the big cutout size that you just made. So, um, you know, I think a lot of other manufacturers out there in the market, their low profile is a smaller bezel size. So once you've cut that large hole, you're, you're kind of in a situation where you're locked into a giant hole in the ceiling and uh, nobody wants to be there. So as I was talking about the four inch low profile, this has also been a popular product for us um, and, and a relatively newer extension. Uh, the mounting depth is under four inches, so three and three quarter inches to be precise. And uh, one of the unique things we decided to do here, as we find that most manufacturers have ignored this, is that uh, the wiring actually runs from the side. So it doesn't run from the top of the can like you would typically see, which adds to your installation depth. So it's truly never going to exceed that four inches uh, if, if, if you have a really narrow area where you need to fit this. So that's, that's really great. Um, and as I talked about the bezel size kind of being the same as the eight inch or the six and a half inch, uh, it, it actually has pretty impressive performance. You know, I think it adds to the low end there, having a kind of a larger, wider cabinet there, and it sounds great right out of the box. So, and this comes with a 30 watt transformer, and of course we could run it at low impedance if we'd like. So now that I've kind of talked about uh, more of the commercial audio, uh, let's move over to more performance audio, and I'll actually hand this back over to uh, Sean to talk about this. Thanks, Rob. Uh, appreciate that. So yeah, the performance audio portfolio for us is uh, made up of um, primarily point source boxes, what we call uh, EV innovation, and uh, it's a wide variety of tools uh, in that family. Um, and we, we do believe that point source uh, has a you know, fantastic place. Line arrays don't always go everywhere, depending on the shape of the room and what the needs of the client is and uh, certainly the budget. So point source boxes are, uh, are a great way to get a similar type of performance with um, uh, sometimes uh, fewer boxes and uh, you know, perfect uh, for whatever room that uh, you may be placing them in. So as you can see, quite a lot of solutions here. Uh, EVU is our ultra compact, uh, also um, primarily used for under balcony, made up of a single six and a half, a single eight, dual six and a half and a dual eight. Um, can also be used um, for stage lip um, fills. And um, you can actually put a 70 volt transformer on the back of those for distributed audio solutions as well. Uh, EVC is one of our newer uh, product families, uh, made up of an eight, a 12 and a 15. So those are traditional front loaded uh, two way devices, uh, but very, very affordable, uh, very high performing uh, products for the price point. And we also have uh, an EVC VI there. We'll, we'll go into a little bit more depth of that product as it's uh, pretty unique. Uh, we have EVF, which is our traditional uh, front-loaded tool. Uh, so EVF 12-inch, 15-inch. Uh, we have uh, S and D models, and those are delineated by the driver solutions. So if you need a little bit more output, a uh, higher compression driver, uh, a little bit more SPL, uh, the D series might be the way to go. Uh, EVH is our fully horn loaded device, so that's a two way 15, but uh, fully loaded, loaded into a horn. Uh, also one of the most naturally sounding, uh, really good uh, fidelity uh, horn loaded devices that you'll find on the market. And then plenty of subwoofer options to choose from. So just digging into uh, EVC a little bit. Uh, so this is one thing that's pretty unique to that product family. Uh, we have uh, what is called automatic saturation compensation. Uh, and this allows the installer really to use our TK150, which is a really high quality 70 volt transformer and maximize the audio signal transfer from the amp to the loudspeaker without sacrificing audio performance. And that's, that's very unique in 70 volt audio. Typically we do see a drop off in maybe high frequencies, certainly low frequencies, maybe even a little bit of uh, saturation uh, and distortion. 
but ASC actually prevents the transformer from saturating and it maintains sound quality and low frequency extension while protecting the system electronics as well. And that's actually standard throughout uh, the entire EVC family uh, as long as you're using the TK150 transformer. So as mentioned, we just want to touch on the uh, variable intensity box. This is an unusually shaped box, but it's a 12-inch two-way. It's actually got a asymmetrical horn. So that allows us to really cover uh, a rectangular room uh, very seamlessly from front to back with really one device. So again, depending on what the application is, uh, you might think about using this for uh, maybe a high school auditorium or a college lecture hall. Um, certainly any application where uh, you wanted to keep the, the cost down, um, certainly the, the coverage seamless, but you needed really just to kind of use one or two devices. Uh, this is really a, a really good solution for that and actually surprisingly high fidelity. Uh, so music playback, uh, some light music uh, bandwise can certainly be run through this. This is a really good sounding product uh, as we have redone it over the last couple of years. The math on this works just by uh, how high you, you mount the speaker. Uh, you, you multiply that times two uh, to get the width of the coverage and multiply it times three to get the depth. So I'm going to hand it back to uh, to Rob, and he's going to take us uh, uh, through some of our line array offerings. Thanks, Sean. And Sean kind of went through uh, some of our point source offerings there, specifically within the EV Innovation line. Um, but of course, uh, there are plenty of applications where maybe a point source box won't work, and maybe we're looking at more of a line array, uh, depending on what the application is. And there's a variety, right? Depends on the room, depends on the space, exactly what tool that you want to use for the job. But I mean, it could be everything from a house of worship to uh, some kind of venue, a stadium, uh, maybe even outdoor applications as well where you need a line array. We certainly have a wide variety of options here. And um, all these line arrays that we offer within the family, although there are quite a few families and it's pretty wide offering, all these boxes are pretty compact and, you know, as far as uh, visually and aesthetically, they don't take up a ton of space, so they're not going to be blocking any uh, video or visual displays. Uh, you know, obviously, you're going to need a little bit of a box here, but uh, all of these are pretty compact. So within the line, we, uh, at the very top here, we had kind of have our our passive EVA array, uh, which is also part of the EV Innovation family, and it's uh, a dual 8-inch. Uh, it's a constant curvature line array, and the rigging is all internal and hidden, so it does look like a nice smooth column. Uh, we do find that it's very popular for House of Worship, especially since this does come in black and white. Uh, it looks like a nice smooth white column. Uh, but they, since they are, uh, they are a pretty unique box, at least the full range boxes are, they are all 16 ohms, so that means I can actually use several of these boxes on the same amplifier channel, um, right? Especially if we have an amplifier that's capable of handling some lower loads, uh, we could maybe put four or five of these modules on just one amplifier channel, and we even offer an attenuation module so that we can do some shading on the lower boxes so we're not blasting the, uh, the front row of seating. And of course, we have some subwoofers within the line. Uh, we have a 15-inch and a dual 15-inch available. Uh, the step above that would be XLE, uh, still a pretty compact box. Uh, it's a single 8-inch, uh, and then we do have a 3 by 12-inch cardioid subwoofer within the range. And then in a similar footprint, we have XLD, which is a dual 8-inch, and it has some unique horizontal coverage control technology when we really need it, need it. We feel like it's a unique tool, and it's a pretty compact box. And then, of course, also similar to XLE, uh, we, we recommend that you pair it with a 3 by 12 inch cardioid sub uh, within the line. Of course, you could use any other subwoofer within any of these families, obviously, as a complement. Uh, step above that would be XLC, kind of our three-way system that's been in the market for a little while. Uh, we've got a 12 inch and then a 2 by 6.5 inch at the mid-frequency range. And then there is a dual 15 inch sub within the XLC line. And down here at the bottom, we have our, our flagship system, X-Line Advance, and we have X1 and X2. Uh, some slight differences between the boxes uh, in terms of performance. Uh, one of the other key differences is X1 you can run in passive, so if we do want to cut down the amplifier uh, count and cut down the channels, uh, we can certainly do that with X1, uh, and X, X2 being our, our real flagship within the line. 
of course, they do have integrated rigging built in with the standard models, but there are also, we recently launched X-Line Advance Install for uh, more install applications where we have uh, basically some external rigging we could add for maybe some extreme angles, or maybe we want a white box, or maybe we need a full-on fiberglass box uh, for an outdoor installation. So those are also available within the, within the X-Line Advance family. And of course, uh, we have a dual 15-inch subwoofer and a dual 18-inch subwoofer also available within the line. So that was a quick overview of our line array families. And certainly, uh, we've kind of gone through uh, a good chunk of Electro Voice loudspeakers in a brief amount of time. But, uh, you know, obviously, Electro Voice is really well known for their production and engineering of transducers. And we specialize in that. We really know uh, what's going into, inside of these loudspeaker components. But we also uh, are an amplifier and electronics manufacturer. And, you know, since we know these loudspeakers really, really well, and we, chances are we have a preset for every single loudspeaker, including FIR presets and FIR drive, uh, I highly encourage you to explore a Dynacord amplifier uh, if, if you're looking at Electro Voice loudspeakers. You know, chances are uh, we already have the preset, so we know right out of the box it's going to sound good. Uh, but, of course, they are great amplifiers, and, and we'll talk about that here in just a moment. But... Uh, Dynacord is really all of our new amplifiers. So uh, in the past, uh, our amplifiers were traditionally Electro Voice branded, and they were all designed and engineered in Germany um, by our Straubing team. Uh, but within the past couple of years, we've kind of changed our brand strategy a bit, and uh, everything that is going to be a transducer, so a loudspeaker or a microphone, will be Electro Voice branded going forward. And then anything that's electronic, so amplifiers, as an example, will be Dynacord branded. So all of the, uh, we've invested pretty heavily on the electronic side as of late. So every new amplifier that, uh, that we're coming out with uh, is now Dynacord branded. So with that, I'll, uh, I'll hand it back over to Sean so he could talk to us a little bit about the family of Dynacord. Awesome. Thanks, Rob. Um, so, yeah, starting with the C and L series, uh, these are some new two-channel amplifiers that we have come out with just in the last couple of years. Uh, C for contracting and L for live series. Um, so you'll, you'll see some uh, slight uh, differences in the feature sets between the two. Uh, the L series, for example, has got uh, XLR uh, connectors and Neutrik, uh, so more live uh, sound uh, connections that you would uh, typically expect, uh, while the contractor series would have the Phoenix connections. Uh, but both series have uh, DSP built in uh, with a full complement of our speaker libraries. Uh, and also, at this price point, uh, to have uh, FIR drive and FIR filters uh, actually built into these products as well uh, is pretty amazing. So that's very advanced uh, feature sets uh, for amplifiers that um, are also very, very affordable. With the contracting series two, you're going to get uh, some GPIOs. So uh, some, some ways for you to uh, do preset recalls, let's say, with the GPIO, and then also uh, time to turn on. So uh, if you don't want all the inrush current on a particular uh, circuit, then uh, you can time these amplifiers on the back to actually uh, turn on sequentially. So um, uh, also something you just don't have to order an extra piece uh, to, to have in, uh, in the rack. So very, very affordable and uh, high feature sets. Uh, and also very, very stable down to two ohms. Uh, IPX, uh, Rob's going to take us through in a lot more detail, but IPX is our brand new flagship. Uh, TGX is the touring version of the IPX family. IPX mostly focused on uh, install. Uh, and uh, then we're also going to uh, get a little bit of a, an intro into our uh, software control family, uh, our new software platform called SonicQ, which all of these amplifiers can actually live in now. So, Rob, why don't you uh, take us through the IPX family? Yeah, sure. Thanks, Sean. Uh, so we're going to kind of focus a little bit on IPX today. Uh, one of our newer amplifier series, it's been in the market for a little while, but it's certainly our flagship. It's the most powerful in the market today. So uh, there are a couple different models uh, within the family. Um, you know, they're multi-channel options, so they're primarily four-channel, and then there is an eight-channel option. And then uh, as far as ratings are concerned, it's uh, 1,250 watts at 4 ohms, all the way up to 5,000 
watts uh, per channel. So, and that's all channels driven. And of course, I think we're pretty conservative on these ratings. I mean, we've had some third party uh, uh, folks and experts test these and they've gotten uh, way higher uh, specs than what we would actually put on our on our spec sheets. But we like to be conservative and, and not just put the burst ratings. But anyways, uh, th that's kind of the model mix. Uh, they all feature some flexibility. They are, of course, all IP networkable, so they're all Dante enabled uh, with AES-70 control, and they feature uh, what we call VLD, or variable load drive. And really what that means is I can mix and match different loads onto an amplifier. So if I could put low impedance uh, and high impedance lines on the exact same amplifier. So if I'm in an application where uh, maybe I have a main system, some uh, you know more high fidelity point source boxes as the main systems, but maybe I have a distributed audio nearby uh, where I'm running 70 or 100 volt lines uh, for, for some loudspeakers, uh, you can certainly do that on the same exact amplifier. So there's no need to buy a separate 70 volt amplifier. Uh, we can actually run this all together and we're only utilizing just that one amplifier. We don't have to add in another amplifier amplifier into the system. One other specific, specific uh, uh, technology we wanted to focus on is what we call EcoRail, and it's really focused on power efficiency. So everyone's concerned about being green and you know consuming less power, and I think IPX does a great job of that. And, and the kind of the way that it does it is that um, these amplifiers actually feature two voltage rails. And depending on the application, right, uh, and chances are uh, there are some light duty uh, you might be using uh, the amplifier in some light duty applications, right? So that could be background music, maybe it's just sitting in idle or sending a pilot tone, in which case uh, the amplifier will automatically use the lower voltage rail significantly consuming less power and it's generally 50% or more uh, less power than it would normally consume at full output. Now, one of the nice things with EcoRail is that it actually seamlessly auto senses uh, when it needs more output or needs more from that amplifier and it seamlessly switches to that higher voltage rail so that you can get uh, the highest output. So there's, and there's no missing syllable, there's no audible distortion or inrush current when we do this. Um, so it's pretty, uh, it, it's pretty seamless. You know, obviously we're not able to demo it with you via the webinar, but uh, we've tested it several times. Um, but it is very seamless and you consume a lot less power when you're not using the full output of that amplifier. So with that, of course, uh, we're talking about not only significantly less uh, power consumption, but of course we're saving on our energy bill. And ultimately, IPX amplifiers are a great piece of technology, and you know that your investment is going to pay off a lot sooner than with another competitor's amplifier that might be at the same power rating. So, um, you know, when it's kind of using that lower voltage rail, we're using a lot less. So one of the examples that we have up here is 64 pieces of IPX 10.8, and that's a lot of amplifier, channel, amplifier channels, right? That's eight channels per, per uh, amplifier here. And just within the first year, uh, we're talking about a savings of almost uh, 10 grand. So uh, with, it, with this one example. So you can see how over time, how that could really really add up, right, within the longevity of how long you're going to have that amplifier, right? I mean, typically, you know, 10, 15, sometimes even longer that you're going to have the system. So you can see how this really starts to add up over time. So uh, one of the specific examples we like to uh, talk about is the Berlin Olympic Stadium, which is, uh, you know, a great use case that we saw not too long ago, a relatively recent project. But uh, we found compared to the predecessor amplifiers, we saved over 70% of the power consumption. So that's a, that's a significant cost savings. And of course, we all want to uh, consume less energy and power. Now, like I kind of mentioned, this is fully automatic. There's no configuration necessary. The amplifier just consumes less energy when it doesn't need it. And of course, with the great audio quality uh, that, that you get with these amplifiers, of course, you want to be, them to be reliable and you want them to continue to operate uh, regardless of the kind of the situation. So uh, it does feature smart PFC or power factor correction and, of course, temp modeling to ensure that the show will go on. And then, of course, uh, there's one other feature we like to, to talk about, uh, which is called ghost power or what we like to call ghost power uh, feature. And, and we find that uh, one of the drawbacks with network amplifiers, uh, especially amps even like IPX or similar ones, is uh, because they're network DSP amplifiers, it involves some significant boot time. I mean, we're talking 30 seconds uh, over and maybe even possibly up to two minutes. So it's, it's, it could be a long time before these amplifiers boot back up. Now, we find that, you know, obviously for live applications, we want to make sure that the show's up and running. 
a couple seconds could feel like hours. Um, but we found that for most installation applications, uh, you know, whether this is a stadium or uh, a shopping center or a variety of applications, there's plenty of them where we find that uh, there's some kind of code or regulation where the mains power uh, has to switch to generator power or backup power within 10 seconds. Um, so uh, one of the unique things with IPX is that all of the amplifiers within the range uh, stay active with, for a minimum of 15 seconds. So, you know, the network connection stays operational, the DSP and processors remain booted within this 15 seconds. So that's past the standard and, you know, you might run into this NEC code or maybe you're using the system as a secondary life safety system, which is very common nowadays. We find that, uh, that that's more and more common. Uh, but we know that these amplifiers will, will stay up and running and won't reboot within that 10 second time frame. And also once uh, the mains is back, so once the backup generator power is there, uh, audio is also available within three seconds. And this is a demo we love to do live, done it plenty of times, and just as simple as unplugging the uh, the IPX to do the demo. But it also significantly saves on, on UPSs, so for backup power. Uh, we don't have to use a UPS for all of these really powerful amplifiers. And then, of course, uh, these IPX amps feature superior audio quality, so we're talking full 96K, FIR drive, and, of course, 118 dB SNR, which is certainly industry leading. And then as uh, Sean kind of touched on SonicQ a little bit, it's uh, one of our newer uh, sound system softwares and it's a new way to configure, control, and operate sound systems driven by LRC series amps, TGX, IPX, or anything that's uh, got an RCM28 out there in the field. So for, for those of us who maybe have an older electro voice amplifier, like a TG series amplifier, as long as it has an RCM28, we can actually bring it in to SonicQ. Um, one of the key differences, and we've done a specific webinar on SonicQ, but there's plenty of training videos and material available if you want to learn more about SonicQ. But one of the big differences is that it works from a speaker view. So you're looking from a loudspeaker system rather than from amplifier channels. And it provides a guided workflow with a dedicated and consistent user interface. So uh, it requires minimum effort, um, and I think even from uh, somebody that might not be familiar with it to somebody who's very advanced, uh, it, it's pretty easy to use, and it makes sense. It has a logical workflow, and uh, I encourage you to, to, to kind of check it out. But it does ref redefine peace of mind, has integrated system visibility, direct access on the fly, and error prevention uh, checks uh, configuration checks throughout uh, while you're building a project. So you don't have to worry about that you messed up or I didn't put in the right information that checks for you. And of course, uh, you know, we tried to uh, play friendly uh, out there with some open uh, open control right out there. So uh, certainly IPX amplifiers are uh, utilize Dante and AES-70 for control. So, you know, obviously we can play friendly with some other manufacturers, but uh, we did know, notice obviously in the market that uh, there are some proprietary platforms that are really popular and QSIS is one of them. And we've developed a specific plugin for IPX amplifiers. Now, not all manufacturers have a plugin as intuitive as this, as this but we've definitely implemented this plugin into several installs, uh, some high-end installs, and some really well-known ones where we've implemented this plugin. So it's pretty seamless to use. It is really popular uh, to, to use QSYS nowadays, and we understand that uh, that might be the standard that you're accustomed to. But if that's what you're familiar with and you want to use a better amplifier like IPX, you can certainly do that with ease. And with that, I'll pass it back over to Sean. Thanks, Rob. Okay, well, let's, uh, let's stop down a little bit for uh, uh, a question, some interaction from you guys. Uh, we would definitely like to know um, what applications uh, do you primarily focus on? Uh, so it could be sports, uh, entertainment, performing arts, hospitality, worship, retail, or something else, or actually all of the above. So if you could actually uh, take a minute and use your chat window there and uh, maybe just type in the letter uh, or if uh, there's something we're missing here, by all means, um, put that in just so we get a good feel of uh, some of the, the type of verticals that you're going after. All right, good. Thank you, everyone. Appreciate your participation. All right, Rob, are we doing a question Q&A here? Are you going to advance that one more? Well, I'm going to go ahead and uh, talk oh, through some application yeah, examples. Sure. Yeah, let me hand it back to Rob. Uh, we do have some really good application examples that uh, he is going to take us through. Thank you.
Hey, no worries, Sean. Uh, so uh, we'll talk through a couple of application examples. We've obviously talked about electro voice loudspeakers and we've talked about some Dynacord electronics. So uh, let's talk about some system solutions a little bit here. So uh, just some basic examples, but kind of get your head thinking about, uh, you know, we've got a lot of different products and widgets out there, but we certainly want to make sure that you're, you're taking a look at these and understanding what maybe some use cases could be. So uh, the example I have here is maybe a, a bar or club right so we have a combination of background and then foreground audio in certain areas so in this example uh, we selected some EVID S uh, 5.2 T's right so we talked about this a little bit had the quick surface they have a quick smart mount uh, pretty quick to install but of course sound great so we're using those kind of in the distributed areas so that could be maybe around the bar or maybe out in the patio area and then maybe for the dance floor or the performance areas uh, we're going to use some EVC loudspeakers. So uh, we picked some EVC 1152s here. So that's a 15-inch two-way and then some 1181 subs. So those are some 18-inch subwoofers uh, to pair with EVC, uh, the EVC tops here. And we're going to power this entire system by some Dynacord C-Series amplifiers, right? Great, uh, great amplifiers right out of the box at an affordable price point. But, of course, uh, we can use this to power the entire system. So we, we're powering not only a 70 or 100 volt system, but we're also powering uh, the mains here as well. So we've got a C1800 uh, just for the background areas, right? So for the EVID S, uh, we're using the C1800. Uh, we're using a one C2800 for the EVC tops, so more for the uh, performance areas. And then, of course, a C3600 for those six subwoofers that we have here. So, um, you know, uh, only a couple amplifiers to drive an entire system here. So, of course, there's a lot of different House of Worships out there. They're all different shapes and sizes. So, uh, but for this one, we picked kind of what we considered a medium House of Worship, right? And we picked EVA, uh, our line array solution here. It's a constant curvature uh, system. And, of course, like I mentioned before, these are the tops here are all uh, rated at 16 ohms. So I can actually run several of these together on the same amplifier. And as you can see here, I've got eight different modules, um, one amplifier, so on one C3600. And I've, I've got an attenuation module here on the bottom uh, just to make sure that we're not blowing away the, the front audience here. So, But we're just using one C3600 uh, for the mains. And then for the subs, the EVA 2151D subs, we're using two 3600s as we know that uh, subwoofers tend to suck up a little bit more power and need some to be a little more robust. But of course, uh, we're using these all together. Um, uh, for uh, for this solution here. So maybe we're focusing more on uh, fitness center application, uh, and maybe this is more the background area, maybe not necessarily the high intensity area where you might use something like EVC or another uh, point source box, but here, well, more commercial audio uh, for these types of areas. Maybe it's a lobby or where we're walking in, or maybe it's where some of the machines are. Uh, and we decided to pick uh, a couple different options here. So there's maybe an open ceiling area, and then maybe we have another area uh, where we were, we decided to use some surface mount speakers because it made more sense. So uh, we used some pendants here, the EVID P6.2. It's a six and a half inch full range uh, EVID there, and then uh, we used the 5.2, uh, 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 the 5.2 EVIDs for EVID S, uh, the five and a quarter inch EVIDs there for full range. And then we've paired both of these with the uh, dual 10 subwoofer, so that's the EVID S 10.1D. So that's a dual 10 inch. And we're driving this all with uh, some uh, C-Series amplifiers. So just two amplifiers. We've got a C-1800 for both the pendants and the surface mount commercial loudspeakers. And then we have one C-1300 driving uh, the uh, subwoofers in this example. Uh, and then maybe we're working on maybe a multi-purpose auditorium. It's used for a variety of things. Uh, it could be a theater. Uh, it could be a, a, a couple different ones. But here we picked uh, a variety of EV Innovation loudspeakers, right? We can mix and match these depending on whatever we need. So for mains, we decided to go with a 12-inch EVF. So we went with the EVF 1122D. Uh, for mains here, and then we paired those with some 2151D subs within the EVF range. Uh, and, of course, you can see here that they're in two clusters for left and right, and we do make rigging kits, uh, specifically whether we want to do horizontal or vertical uh, clusters. So we have that all available there, so it makes it nice, clean, and smooth, and easy to rig there. 
And then maybe we're using uh, some EVUs for fills and delays here. So we've got a couple different uh, a couple different loudspeakers within the system, right, for, for, for fills and delays. So we're using a combination of different amplifiers here. So we've got a C3600 for the mains. Uh, we also have two C2800s for the mains. Uh, a C1800 for the fills and delays as well, and then we have one C1300 there for, for that center uh, main there, more kind of a main fill. And then maybe we have an outdoor amphitheater, so maybe this is something that's maybe a little more exposed, it's a fixed install. Uh, so, and actually for this one, it's a, a decent sized project. So we actually went with the flagship X-Line Advance X2, uh, right? So that's, uh, that, that's a, a, a pretty nice system here, right? We got 24 boxes, so 12 aside, and then we've got eight uh, dual 18 subwoofers. So that's the X1 to 128 subwoofer. We decided to go with the install or I models, X2I uh, models, uh, just because it was gonna be in a more fixed installation and that made more sense. And these do come in black, white, or on fiberglass depending on what we needed here and we're going to power this entire system with some IPX so for this example we decided to use an IPX 24 and of course these are Dante uh, networked amplifiers so maybe we're gonna you know use some other uh, other gear obviously for this system solution where we want to put uh, put the audio on a Dante network and then maybe we uh, we're working on maybe a retail example or this could be a restaurant it could be a couple different things. Again, uh, EVID range is primarily what we're looking at for background commercial audio. So we've picked the, uh, and we've got maybe two different areas. We've got open ceiling and on one one portion, maybe around uh, a specific area or the entryway, and then maybe we have some drop tile in some of the other areas. So here we picked the EVID C 6.2, so that's a six and a half inch full range uh, uh, ceiling speaker, and then we picked the EVID 6.2 pendant as well, so that's a six and a half inch uh, full range pendant. And then to pair those for drop tile areas, we use the 10.1, so that's a 10 inch uh, subwoofer, and then we use the dual 10 inch uh, subwoofer for the, maybe uh, the, the pendant areas where we're able to use a U bracket and maybe clamp that to a beam or something like that. So again, all powered by C-Series, uh, C-1800 for the ceiling and pendants full range, and then a C-1300 for the subs. And then uh, maybe we have uh, an outdoor sports venue. This could be uh, maybe like a high school uh, sports field of some kind. Maybe it's high school football, uh, depending. I mean, obviously, there's some small fields and there's some large ones, depending on what part of the country you're in. Um, but for this example, we use some full fiberglass boxes because we felt, um, you know, they're going to be fully exposed. And uh, maybe for this example, everything's kind of centered around the home stands there. Maybe it's the press box or something like that. And we have the EVF 1152 uh, fiberglass tops, and then we have an EVH 1152 uh, horn-loaded uh, loudspeaker to shoot across the field to the visitor, right? So we need something that's controlled, directive, and we'll get across the field and make sure that the uh, even the visitor stands is gonna have good audio. Uh, and we've got to pair together with a 2151D subwoofer from the EVF range. And uh, for this example, we used an IPX amplifier because we only wanted to use one amp to drive the whole system and we're bi-amping the tops uh, here. So both EVF and EVH because we really cared about the fidelity of the audio here. So I know I ran through a couple system examples and we tried to show a couple different ones. Obviously there is a wide variety of applications. Some are very interesting and, and, and new and exciting. And then some are we're, we're pretty used to and are traditional, but either way uh, you're not sure what to use. And there's a lot of options obviously from Electro Voice and Dynacord. Um, we do have obviously some in-house experts here. Obviously Sean and myself are here, but we do have a whole team of guys that are even smarter than us, uh, some application designers that can assist with ease modeling or creating a bill of materials for your project, or if you want to bounce an idea off us, uh, it's pretty easy to do so. So we do have a an online system design questionnaire. If you go to the ElectroVoice website under tech support, there is a fillable PDF, so no need to print it out and fill it out. You can actually fill it right out online, and all you have to do is email our, our design mailbox, so that's buv.design at us. Bosch.com. So feel free to reach out to us if you need help or would like to talk through uh, any type of applications that you're working on. We're happy to give you our expert opinion. So to kind of recap, uh, we went through Electro Voice commercial loudspeakers. 
Uh, obviously, that's primarily the EVID range. So if you're thinking commercial background music, uh, but we still care about the atmosphere, I'd encourage you to look at EVIDs. Uh, Electro Voice Professional loudspeakers, and we've got quite a wide range from point source boxes within the EV Innovation line as we creep into line arrays uh, with EVA still in the EV Innovation line into uh, some of our other high performance line arrays uh, within the family. Uh, we obviously talked about uh, Dynacord amplifiers to pair with them, so uh, certainly it makes sense. We really know these components really well, so we have some optimized uh, FIR presets and FIR drive specifically for these systems. So I encourage you, if you're looking at an EV loudspeaker, take a look at the Dynacord electronics as well. Uh, we talked about the sound system software. Uh, specifically, we talked about SonicQ. Um, feel free to, to, to look that up online as well. We have plenty of training videos if you want to get more familiar with it, but it's, it's a really easy user interface to use. And then, of course, we do have a third-party plugin for IPX if you're in more of a QSIS environment. So feel free not to shy away from the IPX amplifiers there. Then, of course, we went through some system application examples here to give you an idea of uh, what product widgets uh, you could use for, for a system solution. So with that, I guess we'll, uh, I think we got quite a few questions in the chat, but I'll let, uh, let Sean start taking over with some of these questions for Q&A. Absolutely. Thanks, Rob. Yeah, we do have some uh, really good questions coming in. Uh, so, and there's still time. So if you do have uh, questions, uh, please uh, write them in that chat window and we will be happy to answer them. Uh, we've got a couple of fastballs, Rob. Are you ready? I don't know. I don't know. I, maybe you got them. I don't know. <laughs> uh, right out of the gate. Actually, I'll give you a softball. How about that? This question's coming from me. Um, how much does the uh, design assist uh, service cost? So if I need an ease model or if I need to build a materials, how much that is that going to run me? Well, for you, I mean, it's going to cost you some money. <laughs> but but for anybody else, it's absolutely free of charge. So it doesn't cost you uh, anything to get some advice from us. Obviously, we spend a lot of time with this equipment and gear uh, that we've talked about today. So whether it's an Electro Voice loudspeaker, a Dyna, uh, Dynacord amplifier, or any general questions, um, we're certainly available for you. It costs $0 to get our opinion on something, and we're happy to, to help you out, whether that's ease modeling or provide a bill of materials. But it's absolutely free of charge. Uh, next question. Are uh, there any active line arrays in the family? Today, there are not any active line arrays today. You know, uh, obviously, that is a popular trend depending on, on where you are. Today, we don't offer an active line array, but we do offer uh, some really economical line array options with external amplifiers, you know, depending on, on what the budget or application is. But unfortunately, today, we don't. Maybe in the future, we will. Um, but I hope that answers your question. Yeah, and I'd say, too, um, that, yeah, it's definitely something we have looked at and talked about quite a bit uh, for most of our applications, uh, certainly the passive with uh, amplifiers that are perfectly paired for those products. Uh, it has been the way to go for us, but uh, we definitely recognize there is a market for that. So I definitely appreciate the question. Uh, are any of the line arrays IP65? So uh, some of the line arrays are IP55, uh, so it's pretty close. Obviously, uh, the first one's, uh, you know, uh, the second one's more about uh, liquid, right? Uh, the second number there, the five there at the end. So we do have some IP55 models available. Uh, we felt that if uh, some of them were IP65, it would actually affect their performance. So uh, IP55 is available, though, with, uh, with, uh, with several of our line array families. But that's a great question. Yeah, and I would just expand on that a little bit. We've had some real success with the cruise ship industry, just with um, line arrays on the, the outside of the ships and on the decks, uh, being exposed to full sun and salt water for a very long extended period of time with, uh, you know, they hold up very well. And that's probably one of the harshest environments that uh, you're going to come across as far as uh, salt water and UV. So another question, Rob, uh, to expand, um, I think uh, this question is probably in regards to ghost power, maybe just uh, uh, expanding that or breaking it down maybe a, a little bit further. Yeah, so for ghost power, um, you know, and I, I know I kind of flew through that topic real quick, but, um, you know, for a lot of applications, at least we're seeing, especially for install, 
uh, that we're kind of running into some regulations or where we want a, uh, an audio system to be up and running within this 10 second time period, right? So uh, one of the things that IPX does is that uh, while it's fully loaded, uh, it can actually stay active and alive. So that's uh, within 15 seconds, so the amplifier doesn't reboot. Once the amplifier reboots, which traditionally happens when you lose power, um, you know, it's, it's, it's going to take 30 seconds to maybe two minutes to get that amplifier back up and running and then eventually passing audio. Uh, for IPX amplifiers, they stay fully active and kind of power charge, more or less to say, uh, within 15 seconds before they, they start to hit reboot. So if we're in an application where uh, we're going to lose power or there might be a chance of that, and that's, there's a variety of applications where that can happen, and we find that 10 seconds is usually the standard, so the amplifiers actually exceed that, and uh, you know it will stay active, and the DSP structure set will stay active uh, for 15 seconds, if not longer, um, to, to make sure that we can pass audio uh, within three seconds of the uh, power being returned. So I hope that ex explained it a little bit. Uh, I don't know if you want to add anything there, Sean. No, I think you got it. Um, yeah, we're just we're having a, a lot of success uh, because of. The, the DSP boot times of, of competitive products and the fact that this stays active and then you're taking UPS uh, out of the equation, saving the facility a considerable amount of money. So, uh, yeah, great question um, and, and something we probably need to do just a better job of promoting a little bit. Uh, let's see, will this presentation be online or sent to us? So yeah, it is going to be available. It's, it has been recorded and it's going to be on uh, YouTube. So you should be able to find it there. And uh, I believe uh, once we send out a, kind of a thank you for attending, uh, there will be a link to the presentation included in that. Uh, let's see, is there an intention to rebadge the Dynacord TS series to an EV badge? So I know that's a passive, I believe, four drivers, four six-inch driver column. Um, I don't know, Rob, if that's uh, been talked about or not. Um, we've certainly talked about it, and you know, for those of you who are familiar with Dynacore loudspeakers, especially if you're outside of the, the North American region, um, you know, we've considered uh, there are some very popular Dynacore branded loudspeaker systems out there that we've entertained maybe rebadging EV, or maybe we've decided to replace with a new EV product. So, um, you know, definitely stay tuned for uh, what we're doing here in the future on the loudspeaker side. I mean, going forward, all new products will be EV branded. Uh, I'm not exactly sure if we're going to touch that specific series on the Dynacord side and bring it over to the EV side, but um, you know that's something I, I we have definitely talked about internally, um, but, but we'll kind of see where it goes. But today, uh, unfortunately, it's not offered as, as an EV equivalent. Good question. Well, we got one more, and uh, we have someone that wants to know if you're going to be sending each individual on the call a door prize. A door prize? Hmm. <laughs> I, I wonder what, what could we send them? Uh. <laughs> I don't know. Our, our sincerest thanks uh, for attending, maybe. Well, that is all the questions I think that we've got. Uh, so with that, uh, anything else, Rob? No, I, I think you covered it all. Um, you know, obviously, if you guys do want to chat with us more, Sean and I are, are more than available to talk with you about any questions you might have or if you're interested in partnering with us on more projects. But certainly feel free to reach out to us, and uh, we're certainly available to talk to you more if you have more questions. I know it was a brief hour here, and we're so lovely, you probably want to talk to us all day. So feel free to reach out to us. Easy, easy, Rob. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, there's an email address down here at presales.support at us.bosch.com. Uh, please follow us on uh, Facebook and Twitter. Uh, as mentioned, a lot of these past webinars are posted up on YouTube, so you can follow our YouTube channel there. Um, but we are, are definitely here for you, and uh, stay safe, everyone, and uh, we'll talk soon. Thank you very much for attending.